Oh. Hello, good evening. Thank you all for joining me this evening to discuss the post-16 options for Year 11 students and some information about helping your child to make an informed choice with their A-level options for further university and after study. My name is Miss Allen and I'm Head of Sixth Form. And once again, thank you for your time today. So post-16 education um, should comprise of an opportunity for your child to study something that they're passionate about because they go from studying the traditional 9 to 10 um, IGCSE options and they can streamline those options to start really focusing on what they really would like to do for their career. Well, sometimes some people don't know what they really want to do for their career, but it's an opportunity to explore things that they are passionate about and hopefully turn that into something that's equitable in the future. It's also an opportunity for your child to achieve a qualification that can then open doors for their chosen career or potentially open doors that they didn't even have on their radar. And it's a wonderful time to gain confidence, independence, and all the important life skills that, you know, we all develop as we transition from young adults into adulthood. And those life skills will help widen um, your child's prospects, but also as well help them to kind of reinforce and reinstill that sense of who they want to be as they continue their life journey. So the entry requirements for the Parkhouse 6 form as outlined in the letter that was sent to you um, about this evening are six IGCSEs at grade C or five and above, and that must include English language and maths because English language and maths are basically the bedrock and the foundations for most A-level subjects that a student can um, follow through with. So by having those two subjects as a minimum at a five or above, that allows the student to be in a good setting, good foundation to rise to the challenges of A-levels. Additionally, they would need a B minimum or a six in the subjects they wish to study so that they have a good understanding of foundation level for beginning that journey um, post 16. And on the slide, you'd see that I've added the old grades, which are your more traditional A star to U grades with the newer numerical conversions as I know that you know some of us myself included still readjusting to getting used to you know what equates to a C grade or a B grade with the numerical system. So a C grade is your what's known as now your four which is a standard pass and then as the numbers increase that equates more to your A and A star grades.
So, A-levels. Um, I'm aware that some of us may not be as familiar with A-levels as others, so I'm just going to quickly do a run through so we have an idea of what A-levels are and what Parkas could potentially offer your child. So A-levels are a two-year program that allows um, the student to be able to access higher level educational studies, so be able to access their degree or other higher level um, qualifications. A-levels are structured and split into two qualifications. The full A-level is a two-year qualification, but due to the international nature and the transient nature of being international, um, our students have the opportunity to complete their A-levels as an AS study, which is about 40% of the full A-level in the first year, and that basically forms the foundation of the A-level. And then in the second year, they'll complete the other, the remainder of the course, the other 60% of the course. And we refer to that as the A2 level. And that tends to cover more complex topics that will prepare the student for university and degree level study. Some courses that we offer um, are linear, so they follow the British um, curriculum exactly so there is no AS component for some subjects and if you are from the UK you would be familiar with the fact that A levels are now a full two-year program with no option to complete the AS study. So the AS study just to reiterate is the first year of the full A level and then the second year is the A2 level, which then allows the person to have their full A level qualification at the end upon completion of the two years. So just a little bit more on the difference between AS and A2 level. They both lead, well, the full, completing the AS and the A2 level, so the full two years will give you an A level qualification. If a student finishes at the end of year 12 and decide they're going to enter foundation degree level programs, um, then they will finish with their AS level qualification. They will not be awarded the full A level unless they complete the two years of study. So when applying to university, your grades at AS and A2 are awarded what's known as tariff points. And those are then compared to that specific country's um, high school qualification grades. And for example, in the UK, that's converted to what's known as UCAS points. In the US, that's converted to a GPA. And in Canada, you just get given um, a, based on your grade, you get given a point system. If your child decides to complete their full A-level qualification, thus finishing their British education, they will be awarded um, level two transfer credits, sorry, they will be awarded transfer credits for completing the A2 level studies. So that second year of that second year of your A level that sets you up nicely for starting your degree, the USA and Canada will award transfer credits depending on your grade. Normally, if you achieve a B or above in specific A levels, that are linked to your degree pathway, then you will be awarded transfer credits. So it's definitely something to sit down with your child and think about very carefully um, if they're going to follow through with the full qualifications and finish their A-levels, which will give them a better grounding for applying for degree pathways in competitive unis. Um, and the world is just becoming so much more of a competitive 
um, platform, especially with the amount of students that have deferred entries due to the pandemic and our students just have to ensure that they are giving themselves the best opportunities and give, making their applications as competitive as possible. So choosing your AS studies now and then following through with your A2 levels and getting your full qualifications gives you greater options in terms of the caliber of university you could then apply to two years from now. So in terms of our option blocks that are available for A-level studies at Parkhouse, we have reviewed this and we continue to review our offerings and make sure that we offer subjects that students um, would like to engage with and possibly follow through with to university. So you would note that there's your more traditional subjects, all the sciences, languages, maths, um, computer science, sociology, economics, etc. And this year, well, for the next academic year, we will be introducing um, psychology as an option. Um, Spanish will also be an option and that will be AS only for this acad next academic year coming. Um, and you will note that art has a no AS option because art is a full two year A level qualification. So if a student chooses to do art, they are committing to doing the full two years of that qualification. If they do not, if they complete just the year 12, then unfortunately they won't be awarded AS um, level studies. So that's an important point to note if you are thinking of choosing art as an AS option. And you also note that business in option block A um, is AS only. So if you already know that you would like to take business and would like to complete the full A level in business, then you will need to consider taking business in option block C. So with these options, which will be made available to students on their Teams page, um, students are expected to choose a minimum of four subjects to study at AS, at AS level. So they will choose one from each block. So just to demonstrate if I was choosing my AS options, I can choose a subject from block A, block B, block C, block D, or not block C and block A, block B, block D and block E. And you can choose any combination of the four as long as you've chosen one in a singular block. So our students are expected to choose a minimum of four subjects. Um, and it's worth thinking about and having that conversation with your child about what they may potentially want to study at university. We encourage our students to choose four AS subjects um, to start with, as most universities will require three full A levels. And if a student doesn't have three full A levels at the end of the two years of the British um, A-level curriculum, then to gain entry into universities outside of the UK, they will need at least four AS levels to start their degree programme. So it's definitely worth having that conversation and picking a combination of subjects that you are passionate about, but also will help you with getting onto the potential degree pathway that you may want to do. So just some things to talk with, um, talk to your child about as you're discussing and finalizing your options. Um, has your son or daughter thought about what they want to do for their career? And it's OK if they haven't um, as long as they choose subjects that they're interested in, and then, then we can go from there.
And if they're really stuck as to what they want to do for a career, I'm always available to have a career conversation with both you and your child. And if they're really, really stuck, then I always suggest people just choose subjects that you're good at because clearly there's an interest in the nature of that subject. So when deciding your A-levels, it might be worth spending just a couple hours um, having a little look around at potential university courses in countries that you may want your child to go to or your child may want to go to and just having a look at those entry requirements. Um, because if your child already knows they would like to follow a particular degree pathway, then there may be what's known as prerequisite subjects. So if they know they're going to be following an engineering pathway, for example, the universities in the country that they're interested in may require physics or maths or physics and maths as prerequisites. So when choosing your AS level options, you'd have to make sure you incorporated those two subjects as part of your four. So it's worth just having a quick look at some university websites in the country or countries of your choice, just to have a feel for what may potentially be those entry requirements. And if as a family you are um, particularly stuck on doing that, please just reach out to me and I will help you with having a look at those university websites and having a look at what those potential entry requirements may be. It's worth noting that when you're doing this um, brief research that the same course at two different universities may have different entry requirements. So one university may say, OK, you need to have English language and another one in the same country can say, well, you don't need English language, but you need chemistry. So it's definitely worth having a look at more than one university and just having a general feel for what those basic requirements may be so that you're choosing wisely and making an informed choice. The subjects on the slides are what's known as facilitator subjects, and these are really good for um, students who aren't necessarily sure what pathway they may want to go down um, for their undergraduate studies. So these subjects, biology, economics, chemistry, history, any of the languages, maths, English literature, physics, geography, tend to give students enough of a solid um, study program at A level to allow them to have the skills necessary to do multiple degree pathways. So having one or two of these subjects in your arsenal of A-level qualifications when you start applying for university is really beneficial, particularly if you're not sure, you know, specifically what degree pathway you may want to follow. So that's also worth having a conversation um, if your child isn't 100% sure at this moment in time what they would like to explore for their career. And that's absolutely fine. I mean, I'm sure at your old age, you probably changed your mind several times along the way as to what you wanted to study yourselves and you know, so it's important to make sure that we explore as many options as we can and make sure that the students are as informed as they need to be in terms of looking at subjects that could support the degree pathway, if not lead them directly onto the degree pathway that they wish. If you would like any more information about the specifics of these particular subjects at A level, please have a look at the sixth form prospectus, which is on our school website, or please encourage your um, child to speak to their subject teacher or seek out the head of department for any of these subjects to get more information before they make a final choice.
So the options form um, for IGCSE students is available from tomorrow, and that will be posted on the Key Stage 4 Teams page um, tomorrow morning, and it will be open for you to uh, complete by the 6th of March. So please feel free to use that time to talk to teachers in lessons, reach out to heads of departments for more information, carry out a little bit of research, reach out to me for more information should you need it, and have discussions um, in the upcoming parents' evening about what your son or daughter's options may be based on what they may be interested in. So what happens if your child changes their mind? That is absolutely fine. Um, as a sixth form team, we are very flexible in trying to make sure that students are on subjects that align with their passion, but also align with what they may want to study at university, but also makes them happy. They should be studying subjects that they have an interest in because A-levels are significantly different to IGCSEs. The subject name may be the same, but the subject nature changes significantly. And if a student is interested in that particular subject area, as those challenges um, develop, they'll be able to you know, rise to those challenges because they have that interest. So if your child embarks on an AS program and they're not you know, too sure that that is the pathway they want to follow any longer. It's very important that they come and speak to me and the sixth form team as early as they've made that decision and as early as they've made that realization. And because we will need to check if there's still spaces in those classes that they may wish to move to. And just a note on IGCSE results. So the IGCSE results are expected to be released on Thursday the 18th of August for CIE um, subjects and Thursday the 25th of August for Excel subjects. We are due to return to school um, earlier this academic year due to the um, World Cup happening um, and more information on our start date will be sent out by the school. But as a result of that, all course, um, all spaces on A-level courses will remain conditional until we can confirm that the minimum requirements for that subject have been met once the subject, once the results come out. So it's very important that students choose subjects that they're interested in, but also subjects that they know in their heart, like, you know, they know they're going to work hard to ensure that they're on that course and can rise to those challenges and work as hard as they need to. All Year 11 students will be given an interview um, with myself once they have made their subject option choices and in that interview we'll just discuss why they particularly want to study different things and it's an opportunity for them to ask me any questions they have about their options and um, future um, pathways. Once those interviews are complete they will receive well, you will receive a letter stating what their options are and then you will be required to sign that letter and return it to myself. But there will be more information on this in due course. And that is all for me this evening. 
Thank you all so much for listening. And now we will have a look at the questions and I will answer any questions that are posted in the Q&A section. Okay. okay, so just to answer the questions, can we choose five subjects? Yes, a student can choose five subjects, um, but that is pending a conversation about their um, academic prowess. Five A-level subjects is quite a demanding um, task for a student to complete and we ensure that the student is prepared to you know rise to those challenges and make sure that they're equipped with all the information they have to balance their time well because they during that two years of study they need to also develop their personal profiles so that they can make sure that their university applications are as competitive as possible, not just from an academic standpoint, but from a personal and holistic standpoint. So we will need to make sure that that student is well placed to balance their time to ensure that they can take advantage of extracurricular and supercurricular activities as well. Um, there will be no further maths offered for the next academic year, but if a student is interested in taking further maths for the next academic year, if they can just note down on their options form and we will review the numbers for that subject and inform the people affected as we um, have a look at that. If a student is interested in completing subjects that are in the same options block, can I would like them if they could just note down as well so we can have a look at what those numbers look like because it's not as simple as allowing um, one student here and there to do a particular subject as the options block have to marry in with the teaching timetable. Um, someone has asked, is digital media not a subject choice anymore? Um, so earlier on in the year, we carried out an exploration to see if there would be interest for digital media as a subject. Um, and we found that the interest wasn't where we would like it to be for this academic year, but it definitely is something that we will continue to review as we continue to review all our subject offerings. And should the interest be there for a particular subject, we will look into potentially providing it for students to take. Oh, yes, someone has said that the form needs to be submitted in the sixth and parents' evening is on the ninth. That is a valid point which I can review and I will let you know via the Teams page and via the messages posted after if we can change that to reflect the conversations you may wish to have at parents' evening. 
if any changes happen with the options um, deadline, I will definitely let you and your children know. Well, we're fortunate enough to be able to have the interviews in real life. Um, and I would like to have the interviews in real life. It's always a good opportunity to get to meet all the, you know, upcoming year 12 students, as I don't know a lot of them because I don't teach um, a lot of the year 11s. So it's always a good opportunity for us to meet, meet each other for the first time and touch base and have those initial conversations. Where those interviews can't be held in real life if a student is off during their interview time for whatever reason, I'm more than happy to schedule those over Teams. OK, oh, there's a couple questions um, about students choosing subjects they haven't chose, um, completed the IGCSE level. Yes, a student can take a subject um, for a level that they have not completed at IGCSE level. Some subjects it is a prerequisite that they have completed that subject before because they require um, prior basic understanding of certain things in the subject that are covered in AS, but for quite a few of the subjects, um, someone's mentioned economics, for example, you do not require having studied economics at IGCSE to take economics for A level, but you will require a strong foundation in English and maths so that you can be able to meet the assessment requirements of the subject. The same extends for subjects like business and sociology and psychology. Where those subjects are heavily essay based, then I will look more towards the strength of their IGCSE English qualification just to ensure that that student is going to be successful with meeting the assessment um, criteria. If you would like to have a parent teacher meeting with myself or any of your um, child subject teachers, definitely with me, just send me an email and we will arrange a time that's mutually convenient. If it's with your child subject teacher, um, then please feel free to reach out via email and um, start that, those conversations. If your son or daughter is completing a double award in science at the moment, it is worth noting that they will require um, an eight, eight and above to be able to do a single science at AS level. Okay, well, thank you all again for joining me this evening. And if you have any further questions, please be, feel free to email me at any time and I will get back to you in due course. Um, thank you once again and have a good evening.